Hello, Devlin here with you, and welcome to another edition of the Mondo Nostalgia Podcast. Are you all excited about Halloween? We certainly are. We've got the whole studio decked out in Halloween stuff, and we are, and that's great for a radio show. Can't you just look around and see how awesome it is? Maybe we'll try to get some pictures for you while I am saying hello, and you can see all the great uh, or uh, stuff we have. Halloween is uh, one of my favorite times of the year. I love fall in general, just Thanksgiving, the changing of the seasons, and of course Halloween is in there. One of my favorite bits is watching Halloween movies, whether it's a Halloween comedy or whether it's a, fa uh, a Halloween, um, you know, just a special or or Halloween scary movie. I just love doing it all through October. In fact, I do so much of it. I usually, by November, I'm like, okay, I don't want to see any scary movies for a little while. And sometimes I even freak myself out because even movies I've watched over and over again can still freak me out. I love movies so much that I decided to, hmm, put together a list of my 20 favorite Halloween on the scary side movies. So I've left off certain topics. One, shark movies. There's a couple in my top 20, but I've knocked them out because I don't just particularly like watching Jaws in October when that's so much a summer movie. Same with movies like Deep Blue Sea or Piranha. So they're not on the list. As much as I love movies like Young Frankenstein around this time, and, you know, scary movie and just other fun, scary movies. I mostly like to see the scary ones. So I eliminated those two because, well, Young Frankenstein's in a class of its own, as you know. Um, so, you know, stuff like Ghostbusters and stuff, they're not going to be on this list. Now, that's not saying there's no humor in these movies, but these 20 movies are more known for being scary. And... I want to talk about them in detail so much that I'm actually going to break this podcast into two parts. So today I'm going to be counting down 20 to 11. And guess what? Next week, close to Halloween, I will do my 10 to number one. And uh, sorry for the anticipation. That movie's not in here either. Rocky Horror Picture Show is iconic. Not really scary though, so it's on my Halloween list, but not 20 scary movies. And these movies still scare the bejeebas out of me. Not all of them, but most of them. But these are great movies to watch. So without further ado, let's get in to the Horror Love Fest. These are my opinion. Don't be too mean on me if your favorites aren't in there. And by all means, go into the comments after you've listened to mine and put what you think should be in there. And remember, this is only 20 to 11, so if there's some I've missed, they could be in my top 10. Are you ready for this journey with me? Then let's go. I feel like Brad and Janet already going to the gates of that wonderful mansion as we're ready to take a look at some Halloween fun. Coming in at number 20, is Misery, starring Kathy Bates and James Caan. Of course, this was a Rob Reiner film. I won't know all the directors in that. Yes, bad film fan, but uh, I will do my best. Uh, this is a wonderful adaption of a Stephen King novel. They always say most of the best Stephen King novels were not horror movies like Shawshank Redemption, Stand By Me. This one is an awesome Stephen King adaption. Kathy Bates won the Oscar for this, and it's very worthy. It's basically about a woman who is a huge fan of this writer, and by happenstance, the writer's car breaks down and he winds up hurting himself. She nurses him to health, and then she finds out that his next book in this series that um, features this character, I believe the character's name is Misery, and basically, she finds out that the character is no longer with us and that he's ending the series. And she can't live with that because she lives through these books. This book is scary because it's not only deals with obsessive fans, 
But it also shows us how we get lost in pop culture, which is all what Mondo Nostalgia is about. Maybe not to the extent that this woman does, but the performances in here are absolutely terrifying, and you're never sure exactly what is going to happen. This is a movie that I like to watch around Halloween. It's also another good one to watch in the winter because it is takes place in the winter and actually is a really, really good time. And yeah, I had to put this on my list. It's a great pot boiler. It's uh, like one of those, it simmers. And as you go, you're invested every step of the way. So absolutely had to um, <clears throat> include this movie in my top 20. And yeah, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It is a good one. Coming in at number 19 is a movie that does have a little bit of humor in it, but it is still scary. It's Fright Night, starring Roddy McDowell and... Oh my god, I forgot what the other guy's name is. I want to remember him because he's only done a few movies. So I'm going to quickly look it up. Uh, this movie has been remade, and the remake's not horrible, but the the... Original is still the best, in my humble opinion. Uh, it uh, came out in 1985. It was directed by Tom Holland. No, not the guy who's Spider-Man. He probably wasn't even born when this movie came out. <laughs> and, of course, it stars uh, William Ragsdale and Chris Sarandon as well. And Amanda Bierce, who you might remember from Married with Children. Um... This is a great movie. This is basically a young man uh, is just enjoying his life and he likes watching this um, old uh, movie horror host, you know, kind of like Elvira, kind of like Count Devula. Nice plug there, eh? Roddy uh, McDowell plays this character and he watches this show called Fright Night where they watch old black and white vampire films. Well, one day... He thinks his new neighbor is a vampire and nobody believes him because of the fact that they think he just watches too many of these horror films and he's written off as nothing. Now, this is a great film. This is, it's really scary. Um, well, in my opinion, some of you probably think it's not scary at all, but I, I actually think it is. And just the thought of, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think I get terrified at the knowledge that, you know, you, you believe something and nobody else believes you. That's kind of terrifying. It's kind of like, you know, when people, you know, are not crazy, but everybody starts telling them they're crazy and then they start to believe it. I think that movie captures that beautifully. And uh, the young man goes out of his way to try to prove it because he's also trying to save his family and friends. And of course, the more he gets into it, the more the vampire or the neighbor is starting to be suspect of him. This is a fun movie. He even, you know, gets the uh, Fright Night host involved, which he does not want to in any sort of way. This is a great gateway to horror too. Like I wouldn't let young people watch this, but if you've got a preteen who's dying to see a horror movie, this one's kind of neat because it's scary, but it's not too gory. I know a lot of people say The Lost Boys, but I think The Lost Boys actually has a little bit more gore in this, but we'll talk about that later. I think I just revealed one of my other top 20 Halloween scary movies. But anyhow, Fright Night, great film. As I said, I did not hate the, the, um, the remake, but for your money, I still think the original is still the best. Coming in at number 18, Night of the Living Dead, Giorgio R. Romero, uh, with one of, it wasn't the first zombie movie, but I believe it was the first movie that actually gave us many of the tropes that we know as zombies. And, uh, you know, we'd always deal with the undead and stuff, but I love that this movie actually set the pace for pretty much every zombie movie that followed afterwards. You know, the slow moving, the, you know, the, you know, just the walking slow, the, the thing. I think they actually use the word zombie in the movie and it, it really is a, not only 
a, a pretty scary film for its time. It also just captures the essence. And uh, I also like that it has a black lead in it. Uh, for the 60s, that's quite something because that didn't happen too often. And I think he kind of uses that as a metaphor about, you know, him being the hero in this because a lot of the other characters just can't, you know, find the same fight as him. But this movie is iconic, and I, I hate when fans of horror movies kind of dismiss older films. When this movie set the pace, we wouldn't have movies like World War Z or 28 Days Later or The Walking Dead if it wasn't for Night of the Living Dead. It still works on many levels, and even though it may not have the gore that some people get, there is still some genuinely scary movie scenes in this. There are also some very bad acting moments in there. Judith O'Day, who plays the female lead, has got some of the worst dialogue and dialogue how she says it in the history of movies. And But it still doesn't stop this from being an iconic Halloween movie and it falls at number 18 on your list. The movie is also public domain so you can usually find it on YouTube. So if you can't find a lot of these movies, that's one you definitely can. Coming in at number 17, another Stephen King adaption that actually is good, Carrie, starring Sissy Spacek and Piper Laurie, directed by Brian De Palma. And again, I absolutely adore the original Carrie. This creeped me out a lot. Again, when you watch it now, it's probably not as scary. But if this is one of your first horror movies, which I think this one was one of my first horror movies, it is terrifying and probably set the stage for the ultimate jump scare, but I won't say exactly where it is. But movies now are filled with too many of them. This one just has the perfect amount, but it probably originated the jump scare. Now, I wouldn't say that. There's some good jump scares in Psycho. There's some good jump scares in Jaws. But Carrie has one of the most memorable ones that has been copied in lots of films. For those of you who don't know the story, Carrie is a young girl who is just coming into womanhood and she's getting bullied and taunted at school, not only by her fellow students, but some of her teachers are just not handling her well and looking at her like she's invisible. As she's dealing with puberty, she's also dealing with the fact that she may have some powers that can manipulate things, some telekinesis and stuff. It's a pretty powerful movie. I always liked Sissy Spacek's role in this, uh, playing Carrie. I also liked Piper Laurie, who really is awesome as her mother. And her mother is a very religious uh, freak. She kind of hints that uh, Carrie's birth was an accident and shouldn't have happened and mentions that her father was not exactly the best person and basically tries to deal with her growing up by throwing her in the Bible, abusing her and just all that. It's funny, as I grow up, I read some stuff about this movie, and I have to agree with some of the theories that Piper Laurie's character comes off as a villain when I first saw this many times. But as I watch it now, I just feel that uh, the mother is actually just very terrified of Carrie and almost predicts that Carrie is going to be evil, which makes me hint that maybe the father maybe showed signs of this, or maybe when Carrie was younger, she showed signs of having these abilities. So I don't always look at the mother as the villain in this now. I just look at a woman who's terrified and scared and really using the Bible as her only way of dealing with this. And of course, this probably has one of the greatest third acts in any horror film. Uh, it just comes out of nowhere. And it's so beautifully filmed by Brian De Palma. There's been a lot of sequels. There has been a reboot. But I don't think any of them catch any of the, the magic that this movie has. And Brian De Palma, it's definitely one of his best films. 
Coming in at number 17 is The Conjuring, one of the newer films. There's only a couple of new films on here. This was directed by James Wan, and I believe, I think I got that right. And uh, another great, great movie that caught so many people's attention and actually gave us a movie universe, whether we wanted it or not. Um, and... Yeah, he captures it terrifically. And it's hard because this is actually based on real circumstances because it follows these um, this pair of paranormal investigators who are actually real people uh, that actually investigated this kind of stuff. And that's where the real heart of this movie is. Uh, and the investigators are played by Patrick Wilson and, oh my God, I'm going to forget her name. And I love this actress with all my heart. Uh, she played the mother in Bates Motel, Vera. Oh, I can't. I got to look it up. I got to look it up. Sorry. Uh, she's just too good not to mention. And basically, they go into a family's house who are dealing with um, just so many issues and it's always hard like i found with like the amityville movies it's very hard to vera formiga i believe is her name it just popped into my head i'm probably pronouncing that wrong but uh yeah anyhow i um think it's hard when you're dealing with real life stuff because you want to keep it in reality but you also want to get those scares in there this is a wonderful movie. It's just a nice pot boiler of a movie. It's got some wonderful little scare jumps and it's just a great story. But I think what makes it a great story is the heart, which are these investigators who come in who actually feel bad for the family and just wonderful performances. Uh, the second one is actually pretty good too. Some of the offshoot movies like Annabelle and uh, The Nun, some of them are okay, some of them not so good, uh, but The Conjuring and its sequel are both really good, but I actually put The Conjuring in at the number 16 spot. I believe I put it at 16. Did I say 17? I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, let me just check here. 16. It is 16. So if I said 17 earlier, I apologize. Coming in at number 15 is James Wan again. This time, Saw. Uh, another wonderful film starring Carrie Elwes. Uh, I know some people are groaning because this is in my top 20. Because some people don't like Saw. Some people thought it was around with the torture you know, like Hostel, all the Saw films, you know, The Hills Have Eyes. It was just these torture movies that um, were thrown aside. But honestly, Saw is still a good movie. What I like about it is the little, the little tests they're put to. Because for those of you who don't know Saw, it's basically the story of two men who wake up in a weird situation. They're actually chained in what looks like an old bathroom in an old factory. And they are there because they have done horrible things. And if they don't follow the rules on how to get out, they will not get out. And the rules get really con con uh, convoluted. It get very scary. And that's the thing I like about the Saw movies. I only watched the first three because I found they were getting repetitious. But I like being in a situation where they're like, okay, this is what you have to do to get out. Would you do that? Would you lose a limb? Would you carve out your own eye? Would you walk through a whole bunch of hypodermic needles? It's just a few that are in some of the Saw movies. And it makes me wonder, would I go that far or would I just want to die? And I think movies like that are just amazing to, to see what what you would do in that case and the first saw still holds up pretty well and again nice surprises all the way through it the less i talk about this movie and i probably talked way too much about it already is for the best 
Coming in at number 14 is Seven. Now, this is considered a thriller, but if anybody has seen it, you know darn well this is a horror movie. Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow star in this movie. Uh, investigators that are basically looking into a serial killer who seems to be using the seven deadly sins in order to pick out his victims. I just recently re-watched this movie and it still packed the same punch that I had when I saw it. And the person I showed it to, who never saw it before, I could tell they were on the edge of their seats. This movie is well made. I believe it's David Fincher. I could be wrong on that. Um, but it does definitely plays like one of his movies. And I think that this movie is just an, an amazing piece of work. It gets your hair standing on end and you get to really care for the characters, even though the movie is mostly just following exactly, you know, what the trail of this killer is. Again, I'll get some flack for this, but my number 13 movie is The Blair Witch Project. A lot of people don't like this movie. A lot of people don't find this movie scary. I am just going to say that I am happy that when I first saw this movie, I was terrified through it. And when I still watch it, I still get feelings of that first time when I saw it. This is a polarizing movie. Some people who have seen so much desensitization horror just won't get into it. But if you have an imagination and you actually still get scared at movies, this movie packs a wallop. The sequels and the remakes or the reboots or whatever you want to call them, none of them hold a torch to this original. It started off the found found footage craze where it's films with, you know, using, uh, you know, cameras and stuff like that. Like the, the characters are holding the cameras. Um, there is a lot of stuff in here that some people I could see not thinking was very scary. But to me, using noises, atmosphere, even backstory, all helps to play with this. And this movie, to me, is one of the best films that I've ever seen. That's why it's on my list. I still think it's one of the best found footage films, and it still, for me, packs a wallop. I still go into forests, and when I see something weird or different, I think of The Blair Witch, and the first movie is still among the best movies, horror, Halloween, that I have ever seen. Coming in at number 12, we've got Lost Boys, starring Jason Patrick, Corey Feldman, Jamie Gertz, Kiefer Sutherland, just to name a few, because there's a lot of people in this cast. This is a fun movie. Uh, it has got a lot of humor in it, but it also has a lot of horror in it. This movie was directed by Joel Schumacher, and... He's always talked about, I know he just passed away. I, I actually think he's a really good director. He has uh, directed some of my favorite movies, this one included. He always gets trouble for bat nipples, but he doesn't get enough love for the fact that he kind of um, gave vampires the whole trench coat, moody, emo <laughs> feel. Um yeah, vampires were still kind of old school, traditional. They were still sexy in movies before this. But he gave them the whole edgy, you know, emo, long black leather coats. And after that, we just got a stream of like leather wearing vampires. And he doesn't get enough credit for that. He also doesn't get enough credit for Lost Boys. I love this film. I think it's a great double bill with Fright Night. Uh, again, a lot of people say they like to show this one to their kids as one of their first horror movies. But I think there's some genuinely scary uh, feel to this. Um, just, you know, there's a scene where they're all feeding that I think goes a little further. That If I was a kid, I know I'd be freaked out. Um, I love this movie so much. I love all the characters in it. I, I love that it kind of deals with vampirism as popularity kind of like you want to be in the cool kids 
basically it's about a family that moves to a small town that actually happens to be the murder capital of uh, the United States. And they're basically trying to fit in their role as the new kids in town. And they meet up with a group of vampires. They don't know they're vampires at the time, but they are basically just, they look like a group that you want to hang out with or maybe don't want to hang out with. Uh, it's a great metaphor. It works wonderfully. This movie is absolutely well cast. I think they all do tremendous jobs. Not only is Kiefer Sutherland perfect as the head vampire, but Jason Patrick is just so charismatic as the lead who's tempted to want to join this um, coven or whatever you want to call it. And it just captures the feel of the 80s. It captures the spirit of the teen feel. There's a lot of comedy in there that kind of helps break free of the um, uh, the horror. So, you know, you've got that to look forward to, too. I think it's a perfect Halloween movie, and that's why it's number 12 on my Halloween horror list. We have one more to talk about. And then, as I said, I'm going to continue this list later on next episode where I'm going to do my top 10, but we're going to end things with number 11, Bram, Stoker, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula. That's a whole different film. Anyhow, um, this was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. It was kind of his return to form because after doing the Godfather films, he did some uh, S.E. Hinton books. He did a couple of strange things, and then he had a solid hit with this film starring Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder, Keanu Reeves, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, this movie is not necessarily the scariest movie, kind of like the Universal films, which I decided to leave off because the Universal monster movies, to me, are in an, uh, their own page. I may do a, a, a topic one day talking about all of them because I do love them. But they're kind of different styles, so none of them made it into my list, even though strongly recommend watching any of them during the Halloween season. But this is not scary, but it is so gothic, and it feels so wonderful. It so gets lost in the world it is, and Gary Oldman gives us a treatment of Dracula we've never really seen before. It's a little over the top, but it's scary. It's a little strange, but it is so beautiful. And Francis Ford Coppola just gets so lost in his work here, and he tries some really artistic things that we never really have ever seen him do. He's done an incredible job with the Godfather trilogy and some other movies, Apocalypse Now and stuff. But he really lets himself go artistically in this. Even Keanu Reeves, who is a little questionable in the acting department in this. No offense, you Keanu fans. But it's overshadowed by how good this movie is. Again, it's not a terrifying movie, but it's a great one. If you want to catch the Halloween spirit, you put it on. I don't find this movie scary at all, but it is an incredibly amazing Halloween movie, and I think it deserves to be on this list. Well, there's my list from 20 to 11, and as I said, I decided to split it up just because I can, and it gave me a chance to talk about these movies a little bit more in depth. As we get closer to Halloween, Check the YouTube channel and the Facebook channel for more incredible Halloween stuff. We'll have shorts, music videos, uh, S video essays, and lots of other great stuff. Look out for Count Devula. He's got a lot of great stuff coming up uh, for Halloween. And just lots of great stuff. And next week, we will continue the Halloween Love Fest as I count down 10 to 1. Now that we're done... Either go and watch some of the movies I just talked about from 20 to 11, or go write in the comments and tell me what movies you think will be in my top 10 or should be in my top 10. You're not going to change what I already have up there, but I still want to hear what you think. And maybe you'll introduce me to a new Halloween favorite where I may have to move some of these out. We'll head into the top 10 next week. 
And until then, have a great Halloween season.